Now, ideally, you want a solar panel to be perfectly aimed at the sun because that's when it produces the most power. But doing that is pretty difficult because the sun is a moving target. It's moving throughout the entire day. Um, and also, for every day of the year, the path of the sun in the sky changes a little bit. So, normally speaking, when you're placing a solar panel, the orientation is going to be somewhat of a compromise. You're going to try to put it in such a way that, on average, over the whole year, it's going to give you the best results. But what if your solar panel orientation doesn't have to be a compromise? What if your solar panel is on a movable rig that allows it to aim itself towards the sun perfectly all the time? That's the kind of system that we're going to build in today's video. So the first thing we're going to need is obviously some kind of solar panel. So the solar panel I'm planning to use for this project is the portable solar panel that was featured in a video I made a while ago. Now an important thing about this is that I don't want to sacrifice the portability aspect of that solar panel. I still want to be able to take this thing with me when I go on a camping trip or something like that. So it's important that we build this rig in such a way uh, that you can still easily remove the solar panel from it and take it with you. I also would like for the rig itself to be relatively portable so I can move it around and test it out in different spots because you know one of the things that I like about this project is that it allows me to to learn about this kind of stuff and uh, that might involve testing it in different places. So now without further ado uh, let's get building this thing. So what I have in mind is that we need to put this on top of some kind of frame and then that frame will be able to rotate. So the first thing we need to make is the frame that this will sit on. So if we just measure this, you can see it's, uh, it's about 35 centimeters wide. So that's gonna be the width of our frame. And then for the length, well, of course, the length is actually variable because you can adjust the position of the solar panel depending on which season it is, right? Depending on like how high the sun is in the sky. So during the winter, you might want it like this, but during the summer, you might have it all the way like that. So, you know, let's say this is the most extreme angle that we want the solar panel to have during, you know, the middle of the summer. That would be 75-ish. Yeah, 75 centimeters, right? That should do it. So the frame is going to be 75 long and 35 wide. Right, so there's our fully assembled frame. Now we need to test if the solar panel can actually fit on top of this. So I've got the solar panel right here. Now we're just gonna take it and put it onto our new frame. Just like that. So that actually fits rather well, as you can see. Uh, and you can still easily take the solar panel off again and, and take it with you. So it's still perfectly portable. It's also very easy to uh, adjust the angle of the solar panel, which is also great. But I do think there is one problem with this, which is that, you know, these legs can slide pretty easily. Um, I think they might be able to slide a little bit too easily. So what can actually happen, I think, is they can, you know, slide off the back like this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some notches in these rails uh, to sort of lock them in place. OK, 
Okay, so I've cut these notches in the rails at the back uh, to prevent the legs from sliding. And I've also put some bolts through at the front to prevent the front of the solar panel uh, from sliding, which means it's now all held firmly in position. And I can still adjust the angle of the solar panel, so I've got three adjustment steps here at the back, so I can, say, put it like this, um, or I can put it all the way like that. And I've also got two adjustment steps at the front, so I can also uh, put the front of the solar panel like this, uh, so you can adjust the angle of the solar panel quite easily. So the next thing that we need to do is actually get this frame to be able to rotate. So we're going to have to put an axle through this hole in the middle somehow, and then that's going to go into some kind of base or stand, and that's the part that we're actually going to put on the grass, so that's going to carry this entire construction. So we need to make that part first. So this is the stand that we just fabricated. Uh, the frame that we built earlier on is going to sit right on top of this, just like that, and then it can rotate um, horizontally. Now what we need is some kind of motor to actually drive this. So that is where this stepper motor comes in. So what I've done is I've taken this stepper motor and I've bolted this little motor mount onto it, which is just a, a piece of aluminium. And I've also put a little gear on its shaft, as you can see. Now that's going to sit right about here, okay? And then we're going to put another gear onto the frame itself, or on the axle, right? And that's going to interface with this gear on the motor. So that way, when the motor turns, that's going to turn this other gear, and that'll turn the entire frame, and that's how the solar panel is going to move. So now that we've sorted out the mechanical part of this project, we need to build the electrical system. So as you can see right here, we've got some electronics that I've wired up to the electric motor so that we can do some testing. And I've also temporarily removed the frame so that, you know, when this starts turning, it's not going to hit me. So what's going on here? Well, of course we're using a stepper motor. Now we're not going to talk about the details on how stepper motors work in today's video. But essentially the basic principle of a stepper motor is that it moves, well, in steps. So you drive it with a sequence of electrical pulses, and for every pulse that you send, it moves a very specific amount. So this particular motor moves 1.8 degrees per step. So if I were to send this motor uh, 10 electric pulses, it moves exactly 18 degrees. That's how this works. Now, you can produce those pulses using something like this, a little microcontroller. But the problem is that a little microcontroller like this Arduino doesn't have enough power to drive a big motor like this. So what we do instead is we send those pulses to a driver board, which is this one, and then the driver board produces high-powered pulses that can actually drive the motor. So right now I've loaded a very simple program onto this Arduino and what it does is it simply turns the motor back and forth. That's all it does. That way we can see if everything's working properly before we continue. So, if I take this power supply cable and I just plug in these wires. Uh, 
we can see that the motor starts turning. Right, so now that we know that this all works, we're going to put it inside this box, and then we're going to put this box right there. Alright, so now we've got a rig that is capable of moving our solar panel just like this. Uh, and of course, the next thing that we need to do is figure out a way for this to determine where the sun is and then point itself in that direction. So how are we going to do that? Well, the thing is, we're going to use the solar panel itself as if it's one huge light sensor. Because of course, you know, the better we aim the solar panel towards the sun, the more power it's going to make. And so if we measure how much power the solar panel produces, we can use that information to determine how well aligned it is. So what I've done is I've put a, um, a current sensor module inside the junction box on the back of our solar panel. And so that's going to measure the electric current from a solar panel and therefore how much power it produces. And it's going to send that information back to this microcontroller. And then what the microcontroller can do is essentially through trial and error make adjustments to the position of the solar panel and try to maximize the amount of power that it produces. So, you know, let's say that, um, you know, the microcontroller moves the solar panel in this direction and then, you know, the power goes up a little bit. So then it knows, apparently, you know, we're moving it in the right direction. So it moves it a bit more in that direction. Or if it doesn't produce more power, it's going to move it in the opposite direction. That's essentially all it's going to do. So I've made a program that does that. We're going to upload that code to the microcontroller. By the way, the code will be available so you can use it yourself if you want to. That also goes for all the schematics for the electronics, by the way. There is going to be a link in the description. Uh, we're also just going to spray paint this tripod real quick to make sure it doesn't start rusting. Uh, and then we're going to put everything outside in the backyard, put the solar panel on and see if it actually works. Right, so we are in the backyard and I've installed the solar panel on top of the new uh, rig that we just built. Uh, and if we take a close look at this setup, you can see that I've plugged the power cable of the solar panel uh, into this portable battery box. So the solar panel is now charging up these batteries um, as we speak. Now I'm going to connect my solar panel to my larger off-grid battery system soon. Uh, but for this test, we're just running it on this portable box because it's convenient. Now, the, uh, the current sensing module that is inside the uh, junction box over here, I've plugged into the control box of our solar tracker. Now, at the moment, it is connected using a flimsy little terminal block. That's probably not going to survive for a very long time, given it's going to get wet and, and you know, it's going to be exposed to the elements. So I'm going to have to replace that with a proper connector. Uh, but for this test it'll do fine of course. So if all goes to plan, when I turn on the solar tracking device, it's going to move our solar panel and it's going to end up pointing exactly towards where the sun is. So I've got the power cable for the tracker right here and I'm going to plug that into our battery box and then it's going to turn on and hopefully it's going to point towards the sun. Now, when I looked at this footage, I realized I hadn't really shown you where the sun was in the first place. So the solar panel did actually end up pointing in the right direction during that test. Don't take my word for it. Look at the shadow that this pole is casting on the wall behind it. So the tracking system is working as intended, which is great news. 
You might have noticed though that the solar panel actually stopped moving, so what's going on there? Actually that's something I forgot to talk about and that is how the tracking system isn't actually running uh, continuously because first of all that would be rather pointless. We don't need to run this motor all the time because the sun is not actually moving that fast. So if we would do that then the solar panel would just be moving back and forth a little bit all the time and the motor would be wasting power for no good reason. So instead what actually happens is the tracking system runs for 20 iterations so it makes 20 adjustments to the to the uh, rotation of the solar panel and then it stops and it goes to sleep for 15 minutes before it does it again. So this way the motor actually runs for only about 20 seconds every 15 minutes. So you know, overall throughout the day the run time of the motor is super low which saves tons of energy uh, and this is also the reason why the motor actually uses far less energy than that the solar panel produces. So to give you an idea of the kind of numbers that we're talking about here, uh, the motor uses about 10 watts of power when it runs and it runs for about 20 seconds at a time. So every time the motor runs to adjust the position of the solar panel, uh, it uses about 200 joules of energy. Now let's assume that it's a very cloudy day, it's very dark outside, the solar panel is barely producing anything at all. So let's say the solar panel is producing one watt of power. Now that means over those 15 minutes of wait time, which translates to 900 seconds, the solar panel generates about 900 joules of energy. Uh, so even on this cloudy day with poor performance from the solar panel, it still produces well over four times the amount of energy uh, that our motor is using. Uh, so that's why you, know, you can see the motor is using far less power than, than the solar panel makes, uh, purely because it just runs for a very short amount of time every 15 minutes. Now there is also a, um, a nighttime feature in the code, uh, so that the current has to be above a certain threshold value uh, before the tracker does anything at all. And this prevents the, the tracker from running at night because we don't just want this thing to start spinning in circles when there is no sunshine anyway, right? That would be a complete waste of power as well. So at this point, you might be wondering how much of an improvement did we actually get from the solar panel's output as a result of this tracking system? And uh, well, I have no clue. <laughs> you see, the thing has just been up and running for a couple of days and it's just been horrible, uh, cloudy, uh, rainy weather ever since so I haven't really gotten to test it that much um, or do any kind of comparison between you know not moving the solar panel and then using it with the tracker so I don't know yet how how well this is actually going to help so I think I'm going to do a follow-up video at some point where we'll go over the uh, the actual performance gains of this and, and how much it's actually helped uh, but for now this is it so I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been uh, it took quite a while to make, so I hope it was all worth it and, uh, and that it was entertaining for you to watch. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, then you know I've got a lot more of it, and also in the future there will be a lot more of this. So maybe consider subscribing. Um, and then all there is to say for me now is is of course thank you for watching.